Start the recording back on the second segment. This is our second segment of the sermon this morning. A good conscience before God. 1 Peter 3 and 21, the figure, the like figure, whereunto even baptism doth also now save us. Not the putting away of the filth of flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You realize that when Jesus went to be baptized, John said, Lord, I need to be baptized of you. But he said, no, John, said it behooves us to fulfill all righteousness before God. You see, even Jesus wanted to have a clear conscience before God, a good conscience before God. He wanted to be obedient in every way to give us the examples that we need to live for God, to be like Him. And so, in the baptism, the baptism does not wash away your sins, but it helps you to get your mind straight with God and have a good conscience before Him. If your conscience condemns you, God is greater than your conscience and knoweth all things. But if your conscience condemn you not, then you have peace with God. How many wants to have peace with God this morning? I want peace with God. I want to live a life that is of a good conscience before God. This second section I'm preaching on is whom he justified, found in Romans 8.30. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we say then? To say to these things, if God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that he is risen again who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long, we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, whom he justified. You know, if you feel justified before God, you have a clear conscience. You have a good conscience before God, if you're justified. And he follows a pattern. He predestinates us. He got, you got to be predestinated. In other words, whom the Father will, that's whom he's going to call. No man can come unto the Lord except the Father and the Spirit draw him. And them he also called, 
whom he called, he's going to justify. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. So he follows a pattern here to give us the hope that we'll have in him with our calling. When we live up to our calling, we're justified. And when we're justified, we're glorified. And what does that mean to be glorified? It means that when you're glorified in God, He's going to take care of you absolutely. Nothing is going to hinder you from God's work and His will. Nothing is going to take you down from God. They can't separate you from God. They can't hurt you bad enough. They can't kill you and take your soul away. They can't destroy you by any means. Nothing's going to happen to you that God don't know about and won't take care of. And after they kill the body, just think they still can't destroy your soul. Only he has that privilege of destroying the soul. And when you're justified, you're glorified. And he's done these things so that nothing can be against us. You can say, well, it's too hard for me to live for God. No, it's not too hard to live for God. You just got to be willing to live for him. You got to be willing to serve him. And count it all but dung that you may win Christ. Like Paul said he had to do. He said, I lost everything. But I counted it all but dung that I may win Christ. What was his goal to win Christ, wasn't it? To serve God. That was his goal. And he didn't care what happened. He didn't care how many people persecuted him. He didn't care how many beasts he had to fight at Ephesus. He didn't care how many times he was hungry. He didn't care how many times he had to be in the storm. Because he was in the storm and shipwrecked more than one time. But he said this. None of these things move me. Neither do I count my life dear unto myself. He said, these things I do. I press toward the mark. Toward the prize of the high calling of God. When you're called, that's a high calling. Just think about it. You'll get to be a mortal. You'll get to live with Him forever. And there never will be another tear or a heartache or a separation from God. But you'll live forever and ever with the Lord. That's what happens. That's why He said nothing can separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now look at the definition of what it means to have him as your Lord. If he's your Lord, his will is supreme over you. Now Jesus, when he came to this earth, what did he say in the garden of, when he was praying before he went to the cross? Nevertheless, Father, not my will but thine be done. Says over in the book of Psalms, I think it's the second chapter, it says, in the volume of the book it is written that I delight to do thy will, O Father. I want you to know when you delight in his will and you're justified, that's a status that the majority of the world does not have. I don't care what position they hold in the world. I don't care who's the strongest, who's the best. The Bible says that not many are called. Not many that are wise are going to make it. Not many that have this world's goods are going to make it because the rich find them snared 
with their own goods. They're not concentrating on the will of God. They can concentrate on what am I going to get out of life. Well, when you can count yourself as nothing before God, but His grace and His mercy is everything to you. That's like that prodigal son when he was out in the field. He said, oh, what it'd be like to be back at home, be around my father. I don't have to be a son anymore. Just let me be a servant if I can just be home with my father. But you know, to be home with him means more than being hired because when the termination of your time would be ended, he'd pay you off and you'd be gone. But he said, you're my son. We are the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that we will be like him. And he that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. We got to live for God. That's the end of the second section. We got one more section to go. You turn off the video. Play another song.